Welcome, Eagles, to another episode of Trad Cat Night Radio. I'm Eric Ajewski, founder and owner of Trad Cat Night, the most viewed and followed traditional Catholic website worldwide, ranked number one in the world according to Alexa as it relates to traditional Catholicism. And today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have a very special guest with me. We're actually Facebook buddies. Um, I have with me today Shari Marie. If I pronounce this wrong, don't beat me down. <laughs> Dave Benenditi. And she is on the show Ghost Hunters on the Sci-Fi channel. I know many of you have seen that show. I used to watch it uh, some years ago. I uh, haven't in, in, in recently, but uh, certainly an area that I, I'm interested in. And I know Sherry will talk about her experiences, some of my experiences. Uh, from the Catholic perspective, we're actually in the month of uh, the Holy Souls of Purgatory, and there's lots of stories throughout uh, the Catholic Church which reiterate, you know, spirits coming back from the other side, so to speak, whether it's from Purgatory or Hell, to uh, relay messages, warnings, things along that line. Then we also have the demonic aspect to it, and I'll be bringing my perspective into it, and then Sherry will be, uh, you know, bringing into into light where she's coming from. Now, just as a brief uh, background. Uh, she was born in wow, that's a that's a name here, Schenectady, Shen New York. Is that how you pronounce it? Schenectady. Schenectady. I wasn't even close. Yeah. Okay, so you're you're a East Coast girl. Yeah, I grew up yes. on the Jersey Shore. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I grew up in uh, Tom's River, New Jersey, which is close to Seaside Heights. Oh, okay. Um, or that Jersey Shore. Um, <laughs> those Ubers uh, from the Jersey Shore. Yeah. And so she moved to Boston with her family when she was 11 years old. She graduated from Linfield High School, attended Bentley University while working full-time at an engineering firm where she still uh, works part-time today. She became interested in the paranormal field at a very uh, young age as she experienced many strange and unexplained things. But it wasn't until the age 25 that she began to research and investigate the paranormal because the house she lived in at the time was believed to be haunted Sherry and her family had many frightening experiences there. Uh, it was so bad that she was afraid to go into the house alone, not knowing what was going to happen next. That's when she decided to start investigating with her friends and eventually formed a team. Sherry wanted to help others who were experiencing the same type of activities so they could be more comfortable living in their homes. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, Sherry, I mean, why don't you get us caught up to date on, on the show? How is that going? And then maybe you could just break it down a little bit more specifically in terms of, you know, some of the experiences that uh, you had growing up to ultimately leading you into getting into this field. Okay. Um, as for the show, we did have um, our season finale on the Sci-Fi Channel uh, just recently. Um the future, I guess. I'm not really sure what the future holds for everybody. Um, at some point in time, I think we'll, we'll all know. But uh, as for now, um, uh, there's... Um, as for myself, uh, growing up, I did have a lot of experiences. Um, I didn't necessarily know if it was... Uh, if they were ghosts or spirits or, or what it was, um, as I didn't really understand all of that. Um, but, you know, the regular, you know, you see things and then they're gone. You see things, you know, on the side of your eyes, you, see, you know, you hear things, you, um, so you experience things. But being so young, I don't want to say how many years ago, but, but a long time ago, um, I didn't really understand it. It wasn't really out like it is nowadays. Um, there was no internet to look things up, um, you know, so it's pretty much whatever your fam you know, family and friends tell you what these weird things are, and, and um, some people believe, some people don't, so, you know, there, there's many different things, uh, you know, when you're a child uh, growing up in the, in the time that I did um, that are unexplainable, and nobody really has a, a definite answer for you. Um, the house that I lived in um, that was haunted, uh, just one day it, it, it was fine. And then the next day, um, it, well, it wasn't. It, there's just, there was all these crazy things going on between, you know, the lights 
going on and off and the doors opening and shutting and footsteps and noises and knocking and um and then the feeling itself was really it was awful really really bad um the worst night basically that I had there was um just one night I I was out um came home late and I was just about to go to bed and as soon as I lay down I had um like pressure put over put over my my hand my wrists uh it felt like hands um you know grabbing onto my wrists and like pulling them down and and it felt like a hand going over my mouth so I couldn't yell or scream I couldn't say anything um and then the same thing happened to my ankles and then all of a sudden um an entity appeared at the, the foot of the bed and um and at first it, was, it looked like a doppelganger of my ex-boyfriend um so of course the first thing i'm thinking you know is he you know w- was he here with you know what's going on and, you know and i knew he wasn't with me but looking at it it looked just like him so you know it's the first thing and then but as it was coming towards me i noticed that it didn't have a face and it was just like a, a black um i don't know it was just black yeah. And then it came towards me and then just leaned over. So it was just like right in front of my face. And, um, and again, you can't scream, you can't do anything. And, uh, but then it just, it leaned back up again and turned around and walked, um, away. Now I heard, I heard the footsteps in the carpet, um, you know, but you, that gliding, you know, that they do, they, you know, so I, but I saw them glide and then went towards the, my door and the door opened up by itself. And then that's when I saw that I didn't have any legs, like from the knees down, there was nothing. And, um, and then I just, it went out to the hallway and then the door slammed behind him. Um, yeah. And then once that happened, then everything was lifted off of me. Um, you know, and there's other things, things would be thrown, like, uh, my mother in her closet, she had all these pocketbooks and shoes and everything, in her closet, and everything was just being thrown out of her closet. My mother had a lot of, uh, issues in that house, too, between me and her. Um, uh, my bird was always, like, the, for some reason, it would get out of its cage. We don't know how, um, but something was letting it out of its cage. You know, we had the bird for eight years and not once did it get out of its cage. And then, you know, from once all this activity started, uh, they would let the bird out of the cage for some reason. Um, and the bird would be hanging upside down, which it never did before. Um, God, I mean, just, you know, just weird things going, you know, in the, in the doors, I mean, they would like slam open or slam shut. It wasn't, a little creaky, you know, every once in a while is a creaky, but, um, yeah, my, my brother just decided never to come home after a while, yeah. and, you know, it was just, yeah, it was just a lot of stuff going so on. So, how, how did you, I mean, how did you deal or process, you know, that, I mean, we're... Well, in the beginning, I never wanted to go back, <laughs> if I go back in the house, I would sit outside, seriously, like, in the driveway, and I'd be calling my mother, being like, why are you coming home, because I'm not going in there by myself, and... And uh, so I would just wait outside for her. Um, we eventually moved out of the house. So, at, you know, while we were going through all this, I tried to do, um, you know, the research that you can. Again, there was no internet or anything. So it's just, you know, you got to, I just went and, and, and got some books, you know, like ghosts and, and spirits and, and, and just tried to read up as much as I could um, with that. I was never able to actually go back to the house to investigate. Um, um, you know, we, we moved, you know, since then, but, uh, but after that I did buy, you know, whatever I can buy the recorders and stuff. And, 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 uh, um, and then just, it just started, just started to do, uh, whatever I could. And, and then other friends and family kind of went, you know, went out with me to different places and, and, um, and of course, you know, I mean, the TV station, but, you know, came on and, and, you know, learning from them different, you know, different things. And, and, um, and, uh, and then eventually started my own company, 
uh, once I've learned as much as um, I could, I could learn <laughs> basically, um, you know, I, I try to do uh, just go out and, um, and just help other people that have the same issues as me. Um, you know, by this time, because I've experienced a lot more, because I, I did read a lot of books and I did have my own experiences from going out and, you know, and, and, uh, and doing my own stuff, um, I became a lot less afraid because now I'm kind of understanding of what is going on, sort of, you know, I mean, uh, uh, you know, who the heck knows exactly what's going on, but, um, but uh, it's... Definitely, I'm definitely a lot less afraid um, than I was back then. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting we're talking about this. Uh, many of you know my story. I mean, Sh Sherry and I, you know, we talk every once in a while on Facebook. We don't know each other uh, that well. And I can only speak from a Catholic perspective. I can tell you this, that after leading a very immoral life, um, it, it became very obvious to me that it was a struggle you know, for my soul, whether, you know, between the demonic and between just getting myself right with God. Uh, and I can tell you, as I tr was trying to better myself, so to speak, I was being harassed consistently. A lot of similar things that you were talking about. I remember my home down in Raleigh uh, at 3 a.m. every night, the lights would turn on and the doorbell would ring. And this was for a shorter <laughs> period of time. It was very, you know, very strange. I mean, for me, like I knew what it was like. I knew I was in a struggle. They were trying to get my attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it also put this out there again. I probably a lot of people who are, who are not listening or who are listening to this today are not Catholic. There are a lot of Catholic mystics who saw devils. They saw these things as Sherry explained. She saw. And I can only tell you, I myself, too, have ex experienced similar things. Most of the times when I was not acting <laughs> properly okay being dabbled into <laughs> mortal sin or something but yeah very very similar uh kind of like a shadow figure you know maybe about four feet tall blank face and there was no face but mm -hmm. just raw evil i mean just like standing in the same room with it it was just it, it didn't need to say words it didn't need to do anything i mean right. the hair just literally stood up on the back of my head it 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 fleed for about a half hour and then it came back as i fell asleep it came back again to kind of startle me again so you know, I'm right there with, yeah. with, with Sherry in terms of, you know, believing in this stuff. And it is real. And again, there's stories reiterated over and over and over again. So what yeah. are some of the more, uh, you know, and as I'm talking, I'm going to bring up stories and, and, and some of my experiences to, to kind of parallel what Sherry is saying. But, you know, what are some of the more interesting places that you've been to? Uh, and outside of interesting, maybe the most, you know, I don't know, creepy or demonic, like you wish you hadn't been. <laughs> you know, got into that place because, you know, as Catholics, we're probably wondering, is it like a cemetery? Is it a certain buildings? Um, geez, you know what? Uh, cemeteries, of course, people always think, oh my God, why'd you go in the cemetery? But, but honestly, it's not, um, I don't know, you know, and you don't want to disrespect anybody there, you know, um, by walking around and, and, trying to contact somebody. Um, but I don't, I honestly don't think that they're scary at all. Um, you'll get, to me, no matter where you go, I think you'll, you'll, it's, it's going to be the same type of thing, whether there is somebody or whether there's not somebody. Um, I don't think cemeteries are necessarily scary. You know, I mean, there could be nice people just like there can be in a jail, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like you just don't know who you're going to bump into. Um, yeah, this this from a, a Catholic perspective, Sherry. This is the yeah. month for all, uh, for month for holy souls and purgatory. So we we visit yeah. cemeteries. For, I mean, for a good purpose. We're, we're not like, right. <laughs> and so yeah, it's, it's very <laughs> respectful. And uh, yeah, I'll get into more of these stories. I didn't mean to cut you off, but just oh, from okay. some, but from some of the popes who have relayed stories uh, themselves, uh, such as Gregory the Great, who talks about a ghost story in his dialogues. He recounts the story of a priest who uh, regularly visiting uh, baths. Uh, was moved by the diligence of one of the attendants. Eventually, he brought two loaves of bread as a tip. But the man would not receive them, explaining that he was the owner of the bathhouse, but because of his sins, he uh, was sent back as a servant. Okay, so he came back and, uh, as a spirit. He then asked the priest to offer him bread at Mass and then disappeared. So there's there's these stories of people reappearing 
uh, mm -hmm. you know, coming back from, from purgatory, from, from our perspective and, and saying, you know, basically pray for them, which is in uh, Maccabees for those who are not Catholics. Uh, that's why we, we pray for the dead. We go to masses and things along that line. But I understand what you're saying yeah. about about cemeteries. I mean, you're not there, you know, to, to look for trouble, basically. Right. You know, um, we just, um, there's, and, and as you know, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, many places that you go into and people will say, you know, oh my God, there, there's, there's those awful things going in there. Like whatever's in there is evil. And, but honestly, every time I go into a place, I don't find anything evil. Like, I don't, I just... I know. I don't know if it's because I say my prayers or whatever it is, and they keep something away from me. I'm not sure. Um, but when I go into places, um, I, again, I'm not trying to find it, so I'm very respective to, you know, anybody that's in there. And um, and I just I just never find it. I never. So I never actually had a. Um, anything happened to me? Anything bad happened to me? And and. You know, when I do go into these places, you know, I, I get people get pushed or shoved or, or anything like that. Um, of course, when we go in there, we're asking, hey, touch me, do this, do that, just so we can kind of get all of these experiences in. And, and um, you know, but if they do push you or shove you, it's, it's not because they're negative, which a lot of people think because they're pushed that it's negative. And it's it's absolutely not not that. And I think if you... If people watch, um, you know, goes under their thing, you know, Jason said it over and over again, is sometimes when they're trying to get your attention and your the little touches don't really, you don't feel those little touches, so they just keep pushing and pushing until they have that energy to, to you know, to get your attention. And by then, you, they could probably push you. And then, so, you know, so that person thinks, oh, my God, I just was pushed. Really, it's not like that, though. It's just they're just trying to get your attention, but... The first ten times they're trying to poke you, you just didn't feel it, you know. Yeah. Um, so I just think there's a, a lot of people uh, who are just getting the wrong message, um, you know, the wrong message through. And then, uh, and, and and some lash back, you know, lash out, you know, stop doing this, and you know, then they get upset, and then they become disrespectful, um, which you know I don't agree upon. Sure. Yeah, and it's also from from my perspective, there are several stories. I remember it was a couple of months ago. I, I read a story of one particular pope who came back to visit uh, one particular saint in the church and and said, you know, to pray for him because he was still in purgatory and something like he had like a couple centuries to still go through it. So there's another case where we have an apparition recorded. It you know from our perspective in the church saying, okay, hey, this thing did appear. It was recorded. You know, in history, I always give this because I do have a, a, an outside ministry, as many of you know, you know, working with some females. Uh, you probably don't know this, Sherry, but in the pornographic mm -hmm. industry, which, you know, from my perspective, you really want to have some demonic activity happening around you. Just start dabbling <laughs> in pornography or something. <laughs> well, I'm serious because that's that's how I used to live. And that's I picked up a lot of demons and had them around me, in me. At a certain point, it was, it, you know, and to break free from it was mm -hmm. a long process, a long process of prayer. But anyway, uh, yeah. there was one particular priest called Reverend Shoup who recorded this. Lewis of Granada speaks of a young woman whose damnation had no other source but vanity and a desire to please others. She led a regular life, but her passion to attract attention by charm and beauty was the move of her whole conduct. Having fallen sick, she died, uh, even received all the sacraments while her confessor was praying for her soul. She appeared to him, okay, as an apparition, saying mm -hmm. that she was damned and that the cause of her damnation uh, was vanity and this passion caused her to commit a, a multitude of sins. So here we have another uh, uh, instance. And again, I'm trying to bring this out for, for everyone, whether they're Catholic or not. You don't have to be Catholic. The, the, the bottom line is there's it's recorded because it's such a taboo subject, Sherry, as you know, you start talking about ghosts, people are like, ah, you know, that's, you know, you can't talk about that stuff, even if, you, you know, you claim to be religious. And this is not true because there's recorded stories over and over again from both sides, you know, whatever perspective uh, yeah. that you're coming from. So, you know, are you finding this too? You know, there's a recent story in the Italian press talking about how priests who are being raised to be exorcists don't even want to deal with houses that are haunted or people who are overcome. I mean, do you kind of see this rise in darkness around us? You know, Satanism, 
uh, the occult. I mean, just strange stories we're hearing on a, on, on a daily basis of just it's the world just seems to be getting more and more evil, which draws us maybe to a conclusion that there's there's going to be more and more activity to for, for you to, you know, to keep up on. Um, you know, it just seems that the world is getting more evil anyways, you know, with, with everybody's, oh God, um, attitudes and everything, unfortunately. So I don't know if that, if it's something on the other side that's making people this way or because of people being this way that it's acting up more on the other side. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know either way. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure. Well, that's okay. I'm just trying to pick your brain again. Yeah. Let me try to keep it real loose here. Now, have you ever, uh, you know, on the show, re- like, got any kind of footage to where you've recorded a ghost? I mean, maybe you, you, you've recorded some noises, but I mean, have you ever got any tangible proof that you, you know, have something on film that you would indicate, you know, a, a, a spirit, uh, if you will? On the show? Yeah, either or. Either or. I mean, whether you're oh. in practice or. Yeah, um, I mean, over the years I've been doing this since the 90s, so we definitely have, um, you know, between, you know, between the shadows and actual apparitions, you know, things that, things that we've experienced ourselves, so it's not, people always show me pictures and I don't, I'll look at them, you know, but I mean, I'm not there, so I'm only going to believe the stuff the, the pictures and the videos when I'm there, you know, I, I seen it with my own eyes. I, I have the picture. I, I have, you know, I was there. We have the video. I heard the sounds. Those are the things that I can definitely say, um, you know, yes, I saw it with my own eyes. We have a picture of it. We have a video of it. This is what was going on, you know, at that point in time. Um, I mean, that's why I do it because I do believe in it because I've experienced it many times over and over and over again um okay what was it oh no that's fine fine. uh you know i wanted to ask you uh your take on this you know because you see this whole like ufo phenomenon there's a lot of people saying that they're have you know these alien abductions i just wanted to get your Mm -hmm. take on this because they kind of seem to parallel demonic activity where kind of what you were describing you know pressure uh, on their chest, that's what I would experience a lot from from these devils. Was a pressure on my chest, like I couldn't breathe, like, right. like a heavy presence, uh, which I certainly knew wasn't contrived in my mind. I knew, I mean, I knew very much it was spiritual, mm-hmm. um, you know. But you see that with these kind of like alien, quote unquote, abductees, where you know they can't scream out loud. I forget the actual scientific term for it, but it kind of seems to me that it's it's more on that side of things as opposed to uh, what what people would. I guess, term aliens. I don't know if you have any opinion on that. Um, no, I, I mean, I definitely believe in UFOs because I personally did see one. Um, I've never seen an alien as for, as for much, you know, that I know. I mean, maybe what we see are aliens. I have no idea. You know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, because I, you know, I, I do listen to, uh, you know, station, radio stations down and I hear them talking about it. And so it does make you think, you know, what if, what, you know, what we saw is an alien or if it's, this, you know, the spirit or, or all these things are different or the same. And I mean, there's so many questions, but I honestly don't have an answer. I don't really know. Um I mean, I always just think that everything is kind of separate. You know, there's aliens and there's spirits and there's ghosts, and you know, so everything is kind of like separate for me. But, um, but I definitely believe um, that there's uh, something out there because, like I said, I've experienced the UFO. It was in front of me, so um, and my whole family was there, so it wasn't just me. So, uh, so there's a whole bunch of us that that saw it, but we didn't see anybody coming in or going out or. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I don't know what to believe, really. Yeah, one of the things we talk about, and I cover this because I have an extensive background in the New Age, Sherry, and it, you know, a lot of stuff that I talk about is even taboo for Catholics. For us, you know, these the UFOs, and I'm not suggesting that you know you might not see something in the sky because you know our governments and the world governments they truly do have technology which is like 50 plus years advanced of ours. 
Um, but coming at it from a Catholic perspective and kind of the times that we live in, you know, we believe that they are fallen angels. Uh, and rather than, you know, interplanetary beings, we, we see them as being interdimensional beings. And again, another reason why I wanted to bring you on today was to kind of bring this up that, you know, as we progress here from our perspective, it's going to get more and more demonic. There was one Catholic priest who was the Roman Catholic Church's main exorcist. His name was Father Malachi Martin, where he basically was implying that two dimensions are about to cross. Like, everyone is about to see demons. Okay, you might not know this, Sherry. Again, we, we, mm -hmm. you know, we know each other a little bit, but there's this, this one event that's going to be called the Three Days of Darkness. And uh, during this three-day period, every devil will be let loose on the earth. Uh, and this is a long-awaited uh, event, if you will, or prophecy in the church that the Blessed Virgin Mary has been warning about. And so it's like kind of like, uh, you know, the, the immaterial world meeting the material world. And everyone is literally going to see. I mean, you don't want to see it, but or at least most people, I wouldn't think. And, you know, the, the way it's been put is like, if you're not inside during those three days, you're, you're a goner. I mean, you'll, you'll die of a heart attack. You're going to see everything. You're basically going to see hell unchained. And so that's the reason why, you know, I bring it up is, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people kind of think of it's, you know, it's a joke. But for us, yeah, I mean, you know, the UFO phenomenon would be more, you know, fallen angels. Not that, you know, the church has ever infallibly condemned that they're, you know, are aliens. I personally don't don't believe in the whole alien theory, but that's that's just me. Now, talk about a, a little bit more. You know, what, what's your what's your end goal in all this in terms of, you know, why you do what you do? I, I, you know, you talked about helping families. You got any good right. success stories of, of helping, uh, you know, helping some families understand what's going on and then, and then, you know, maybe shedding some light, sharing your experiences with them? Um, yes. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, there, uh, a woman called me one day telling me that her son was um, starting to experience some things. She doesn't know what it is. Um, but she was getting worried because I, I guess it was been going on for, for a couple of months. Uh, so she called me and, uh, you know, so I, I went out there and he was 16 years old. Now they have a, he has a sister too, that's 12, but nothing was happening to her. It was only happening to the boy. Um, he turned 16 years old. The, basically the whole story was, um, is that he was, he heard the voices, there was footsteps in front of him, there was knocking at the door, whatever, he was in the living room, all these things would always happen, these things would move, um, he would see things, uh, however, when he went into his bedroom, it was kind of like his little safe zone, like nothing would happen, it was just when he was in the living room by himself, and um, so he was 16, just got his license, he's out and about um, doing things that normal 16 year old boys would be doing um and uh unfortunately he started uh drinking also okay. so um we we my team and i did our you know investigation and what it came out to be was that it was his great grandfather um his great grandfather you know his guardian angel and he was trying to basically warn him um, about his drinking. Wow. And um, yeah, so he kept, and, and we have it on the recorder, you know, like Rob wow. is drinking, Rob is drinking, you know. And, and um, so usually, you know, when I do my personal ones back home, you know, I'll, I'll have the people stay there. You know, whoever's having the um, experiences, you know, we, they stay with us. And um and so the son, you know, heard it. We, we also were asking questions, too, you know, to make sure that this was the grandfather talking to us. So the mother, you know, was there, and she would give him personal questions and only, you know. Um, and so we, you know, found out that it was him. And then, you know, well, what is it that you're trying to say? And he's like, Rob is drinking. And, and um, so basically, you know, he used to come home at night. And, um, drunk, 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 drunk. And, uh, you know, so we told him, listen, this isn't, you know, your great grandfather, if he's your guardian angel, he can, he can see your future. He, he knows what's going to happen. And unfortunately it's not good if he's trying to, you know, he's coming down here scaring you and, and trying to tell you something. And, um, 
And, uh, you know, so it, it scared him enough that he actually, he did stop drinking. Thank God. So, uh, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully we saved his life, you know? And so, I mean, it's just, it's just stories like that, that, um, you know, what if, what, you know, what if the mother didn't call us, you know, and then, and, you know, who knows, who knows uh, what could have happened, but um, it definitely helps that, um, that he actually heard his voice, you know, because like, that's what freaked him out, and in saying his name, you know, he's like, Rob is drinking, and he's like, oh my god, you know, it just, it scared him out to death, and he was like, that's it, I'm done, <laughs> So, and he, you know, he came clean with his mother, his mother and him have a, a, a better relationship now. And also, um, I guess the great grandfather used to be an alcoholic and, um, his son, uh, used to, you know, they used to all live in the same house and the son actually never stepped foot back into the house because his childhood was, uh, childhood was so bad. Um, that he never stepped back into the house. Um, so it's the, the daughter that now lives in that house. So, um, you know, the daughter and then the great grandson. So during that, this whole investigation, um, the daughter was talking to her grandfather, talking about her father and him. And, um, and he actually said, sorry you know, that he was, that he was sorry. Um, and so we actually, when I did the whole, um, uh, the, the reveal and I asked for the father, you know, I'm like, tell your father that he should come in. He needs, you know, he needs to hear this. And, and, um, so it was the first time that he stepped foot in this house after, you know, moving out for good. And, um, and then he heard his father, uh, saying that he was sorry. Um, you know, and he just broke down and crying and, and now he's fine. You know, so I mean, think of how many years went by with, you know, you know that, that all that pain and everything, you know, and so he finally heard his father saying that he was sorry and, and now he goes in the house, no problem. Um, yeah, so it's just, I guess this is why we all do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's a great story. And then... Yeah. Um, you know, I want to do a follow up here again for those who are not Catholic during the three days of darkness. Uh, you know, our lady's talking about how all the devils and wicked will take the most hideous shapes on the earth. Red clouds like blood will move across the sky. Crashes of thunder will be heard all over. All, all in all, it is foretold that three fourths of the world will die during this particular event, which is maybe new to a lot of people. You know, the bottom line is, as I mentioned, there's going to be a convergence, in my opinion, of, of basically the immaterial world and the material world. And that's why I'm bringing on Sherry today, because I, I do find this topic uh, very, very interesting. Um, creepiest place you've ever been, Sherry? Mm, creepiest place I've ever been. Yeah, um, you walked in there, maybe you could just feel raw evil. Oh God. Um, I honestly can't even give you a, you know what? I, when I go into places, um, well, first of all, I'm not very sensitive, so I don't pick up on a lot of stuff. I'm not psychic. I'm not a medium. Um, I don't, I don't, um, you know, before, before I started investigating and doing all of that, I could actually pick it up, like, again, like, when I was in the house and stuff, like, you just, you, you felt it, um, but since, since the more I've, I've learned, I've actually have, um, maybe I just blocked myself from it, because when I go into places, I'm, I'm skeptic, um, you know, and until something happens to me, I, I really, I really don't, um, I don't, I don't feel anything. Um, I thought I remember, so, I can't remember if it was Ghost Hunters or, or not. I know there's a few shows out there. I remember years back uh, wherein the team had went to, I think it was a jail cell where they actually picked up on camera a little shadow figure. I mean, I remember seeing it. I was like, oh my gosh, that's, yeah, that's essentially what I saw. Yeah, um, no, I, you know, I've, I've been to jails. 
Um, but I never had that scary feeling, you know, I don't, I don't know, maybe because of, maybe because I'm not sensitive, you know, there's a lot of people that are sensitive and they have all that feeling and they have, you know, I feel sad, I feel angry, I feel this, I feel but I am, I am like far beyond, <laughs> like I'm not sensitive at all. Um, you know, I need, I need that equipment and, and, um, just because when I go in, it's, I just, uh. You know, you, you might feel a little weird just because you don't know where you're going or it's, you know, obviously it's pitch dark. Um, but but not because like, nobody's, nothing is ever, um, I don't know, I just don't feel, like I said before, I don't really feel the evil maybe, maybe because they're not really um, trying, either trying to scare me or maybe they're afraid of me or I don't, I don't know what it is, but I don't, I don't feel that. When I go into places. Now, have you ever had a an experience where, you know, maybe someone who is in the flesh, someone who appears to be, uh, you know, a person who you're, in your opinion, maybe is a fallen angel kind of cloaked in disguise? Uh, you know, there's that movie out there. I think it was Denzel Washington called Fallen, where you know the devils basically, you know, are are, are bouncing from body to body. And again, this is all mm-hmm. scriptural, folks. I mean, we have our Lord who who, uh, you know, removed uh, the, the one possessed person who was, who was plagued by a legion of demons. And we know that they, they try to attempt to move from body to body. So that's basically what the premise was of that. And I just wanted to, to share with you a story. Just, I mean, the battle is real, folks, between the good and evil and the necessity for, you know, for us to really truly remain from moral sin. And I recall when I was still battling a lot of vices, uh, Sherry, and encountering one of these things again, who was kind of like egging me on to do something i shouldn't be doing and i remember at one point you know it was at a breaking point in my conversion like you know i gotta stop with this stuff and for me it was the rosary uh you know and moving forward but i remember i was so disgusted you know i gave this this being the middle finger three times and that's just how like i was just mad like that because i kept giving in to myself and so sure enough uh you know as i'm trying to explain this the next day to a family member i was out walking true story uh, and uh, so I'm explaining this to a family member. Other, on the other side of the road is a child walking. Uh, I remember, you know, coming around the corner, make a left-hand turn, being really loud, uh, just, you know, very obnoxious or whatever. And so I caught, out of the corner of my eye, I was caught him walking towards us on the other side of the road and, and trying to pay attention to the family member I was talking to and explaining this story. And uh, sure enough, the kid calls out my name. I have no idea who he was. Okay, little mm-hmm. kid. I mean, I don't even, you know, very young. You know, hey, Eric. And guess what? Guess what happened, Sherry? Middle finger three times. Oh, wow. <laughs> Just like the night before with these devils. So yeah. The, the bottom line is, you know, I think that they can cloak, you know, fallen angels and just angels in general. And that's recorded in scripture, too, how uh, I think it was the angel Raphael who clothed himself in, in flesh as a man and actually ate with people. So what I'm saying is, is you know, people who you may, who you may even encounter in real life could be... <laughs> <laughs> not who you think they are. Um, and so, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, topic, Sherry. So you, you said that the show is, <laughs> is done for now? I mean, it's, there's no more? Um, on the Sci-Fi channel, it is no longer. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much all I can say right now. Oh, okay. I see what yeah. you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we definitely want to see you continue on with your work. Um, and uh, like I said, I haven't really been paying attention a, a lot lately to what's been going on in that area. But again, it's the reason why I, I bring you on, Sherry, is I, I truly do believe there's going to be more and more occurrences. I don't know if you've looked mm-hmm. into that program CERN yet. Have you Have you seen this, this uh, program called CERN? It's C-E-R-N. It's a very occultic program where they're – I mean, the, basically, the end game is to try to create a stargate between our world and the not so, you know, the not so good world. Right? No, no, I haven't. Yeah, look into it, Sherry. Um, you might be able to find some some places that they're affiliated with that would be good places to, you know, maybe investigate. But mm-hmm. well, the reason why I bring that up, Sherry, is because there's some people who, when they do the, when they run this CERN program, and basically, it's, they're they're trying to converge the two worlds, as I mentioned. Uh, it's my opinion that during the three days of darkness, the CERN program will be in full full bloom, if you will. 
and uh, there have been people to record that they're seeing things. They're seeing demons and they're seeing devils. You can look it up on YouTube. Just look up like CERN ghosts or CERN fallen angels or something, and you, you'll see some at least halfway mm -hmm. decent people trying to explain it. So it might be something you know for you to look you know look into uh, on a different mm -hmm. side. But um, what I'm going to do also for our listeners is put up your Facebook, your Twitter. Um, so they can uh, stay connected to you. Hopefully you'll get mm -hmm. uh, more traffic that way. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to close uh, with what St. Thomas talks about on ghosts. He says, according to the disposition of divine providence, separated souls sometimes come forth from their abode and appear to men. It is also credible that this may occur sometimes to the damned and that for man's instruction and intimidation, they may, per may be permitted to appear to the living or again, in order to seek our suffrages and to those who are detained in purgatory. And, and, and Sherry, he's the greatest uh, mind in the Catholic Church. So that gives credence to what you're, you're doing. Because you just relayed a story where someone was appearing to the young child and trying to intimidate him for the man's instruction. Not like purposely intimidate, but to get him off of the wrong path, so to speak. Right. And so here we have St. Thomas uh, saying, uh, essentially what you have said so mm -hmm. sherry appreciate your time i know you got to get going and uh you mm -hmm. know maybe we could do this uh down the road and, and if you got anything new for us but i would definitely look into that cern thing it might be a different avenue for you to to kind of look into i don't know yeah. here in the united states i know they have different areas where they are testing that as well um uh, it's specifically in europe uh the main program and uh yeah it's 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 going to get weird. I've been telling people it's going to turn into the twilight zone here soon. I think you're going to have a lot more of these occurrences where people are seeing things. And uh, it's going to be very, very interesting times. Yeah. Um, so without further ado, folks, uh, I appreciate Sherry coming on. Uh, and until next time, stay safe and God bless. Mm -hmm.